Good morning, good morning. So today, as I said, we would be spraying. Oh, we're already hooked up now. I think I saw an issue. Yes, I did. Inside my tractor, I thought I put herbicide, and I've actually somehow ended up with fertilizer. Turns out when I tried to put the herbicide on top and load it in from the top, it didn't. It kind of took it from the pallet that was next to it on the side, which was liquid fertilizer. If I park this next to this, is it going to put this in the tank? Is it going to put it in the tank? No, it's going to make a new one. Of course it would. Why Why wouldn't it? Oh, the straw field thing's done as well. That's cool. So, there we go. That's herbicide. Now, I know that this sprayer is a bit big. It was really cheap as well, which I found. I say really cheap. It was 34 grand or something. And I didn't really realise... Ooh, steady. Just sweep all the strawy stuff down. I didn't realise that it was like this big. I can do this field in next to no time at all. Which is kind of cool. I don't know if this does any damage to the crops and stuff, though. Which is probably why I've cultivated the field and spraying it now in the hope that it doesn't damage any yields. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if you can herbicide at the wrong time. Probably. But my brain says if I herbicide now, before I've planted, then in theory, the weeds can't take root, as it were. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments how wrong I am there. But uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just how it makes sense to me. So we'll just give this one a quick spray. It's interesting that it doesn't actually seem to do anything to the weeds that are on the grass. It only does anything to the field. Despite the fact that the grass is mowable. But that's just one of those things. That pallet of herbicide has also lasted amazingly well. But then when you think about it, the size of the field compared to the size of the sprayer is next level thing. I'm going to fold us all up. I'm going to make way to the other field over yonder. It's just insane, man. I did notice that I can change where I spray from as well. But that doesn't seem to have any impact on how much folds out. It's like the whole thing still folds out. But it'll only spray from certain little areas, which is like... It's not pointless, but... At the same time, we unload, we unfold, sorry, this much. And then to only spray from little sections. I don't know. But this is by far the easiest job on the farm so far with the size of this thing. Which I do not have a problem with. At all. Because it also means that when we come to do fertilizer as well, fertilizer is going to be an absolute biscuit to do. It will take no time at all, which will be good for the field, good for the crops, good for me, because I can just trundle down and get her done. We are in August, so I'm pretty sure we can't plant anything until September was sort of the earliest. Don't really know. Let's we'll take a quick look to see what we can plant while this folds up. So we can plant the canola again, but then it's like a year to wait for it. Same with the wheat and the barley, actually. I, I do want to do some wheat. I want to keep getting some straw. Other than that, it's going to be a long wait until the start of the year. I'm not entirely sure I want to wait that long. So we'll have to see what we've got. Um, oh yeah, harvester now, don't I? Parked him back in there. I'm presuming it's ready to go anyway. It should be. Needs liming, needs rolling. This is ready to go. 73% yield bonus on that. That's pretty good. Doubt that means that we'll be getting an awful lot though. Just hop in. And get going. And away they go. Hopefully, when we plant next time round, we will remember not to 
<laughs> not, not to run over everything. Okay, down it goes. How are we looking for pallets? Still got two tomatoes. Oh, that was something else. So I was having a, a, a ponder. Stop, 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 stop. Straw, please. There we go. Yeah, so I was having a ponder about our pallet delivery. And I noticed there was a trailer in the shop that might actually help us in more ways than one because it's a little jack-of-all-trades kind of thing. It goes against what I said of my reasoning for having the trailer that I do have at the minute, though. And that was obviously because the one that I have at the minute, it can be on the back of the pickup truck. Whereas the other one has to be pulled by a tractor. The fact of the matter is that at the moment, the trailer is also just sitting there doing nothing for a long time. Kind of doesn't matter if it needs to be pulled by a tractor. Because if I'm working the fields and stuff, or I've got even helpers working the fields and stuff, it means I'm not delivering anyway. So I might, might have a look at the price of this trailer that I'm thinking and do some shimmy shuffling around simply because the trailer that I'm thinking I'll show you actually, I'll show you in a minute the trailer that I'm thinking can be used for everything I mean most of them can but it's a nice flatbed trailer so it makes it really easy to get the bales on it's this one it's this little blue one it's so simple and it can be used for everything and it has straps and everything so that's something that i'm potentially looking at it's fifteen thousand, and the box trailer that we've got is 12 so you know have we got anything loaded up already because if i don't have anything loaded up i might as well use it doesn't look like we do doors are shut so that means it's just come back right yeah so i'm gonna sell that we'll get something back for it i'm gonna buy this one just because it's, like I say, it's a jack of all trades. I know that I can put bales on this. I can put pallets on this. I can do everything that I want to on this. So in my head, it's just, it, it just makes a little bit more sense. And I know, I think this trailer issue is going to be one of those things where I'm constantly chopping and changing of which one I get. But it just feels that it's just sort of smarter, if you like. It's a smarter business move. Rather than trying to struggle using the grain trailer or even leasing a trailer every time we need to move some bales or something just pull that one out whack it in jobs are good in and in fact it'll come in handy right now when we do these because i'm gonna bail this up that's why i wanted the straw because i want to lean towards getting some animals so i might get some cows because cows do milk but I was also looking the other day and I see that sheep are pretty cheap in that they only take grass, potentially water, depending on which kind of pen you get. So for something that just takes grass or hay, uh, sheep might be a good way forwards and their wool is pretty nice. But we'll just have to, have to see. I don't want to get too carried away and caught up with my options. I don't want to end up getting something where it's like, okay, so now I've got to get food for the animals. I don't have the land space for the food for the animals. And just end up in a panic. But I think sheep would be a, a fun a fun way to go. And then I've got the straw that we're doing now. Should we need to get anything like cows? Because I know that the cows like straw. And I think you can use the straw as like a double bubble, can't you? You can put it into total mixed rations, and then you can also use it for bedding, depending on, again, which cow shed barn thing you buy. And then if you use straw in there, you get manure, which could be fun to spread on the land, but then that means we've got to buy something else. So I think sheep might actually be a, a more sensible purchase, because we don't actually need anything extra for sheep. Sheep eat hay slash grass, and they produce wool on a pallet. So we've got the means to provide the food. We've got the grass cutting equipment. We've got a baler. I don't think we've got a tedder though, but that's 
choice, I suppose. If they eat grass, they can eat grass. But, yeah. Sheep might be a better way to go. Don't know how much a sheep pen field, whatever it is, costs. And I don't have an awful lot of cash right now. So, potentially not what we will be doing. But, yes. At some point, I think sheep would be a nice way to go. I just don't know where I'll put them. I don't particularly have much land space. That little greenhouse, I was thinking about that as well. It's in a ditch. In a, like the, the land dips down to it. I'd rather like to smooth the land out or make the, the dip not so dippy. At the moment, the greenhouse is selling direct and I'm not sure if that's what I'd like to do. But it's what's happening just because of the way that the land is shaped. Ideally, I would like to sell it myself. Not that I'd sell it anywhere useful, but I'm sure I read somewhere, or somebody said, that you actually get a little bit more by selling it yourself than you do if you sell it directly from the place. And in all honesty, every morning, you know when you start the new day, every morning it tells you the prices in the corner. I haven't really noticed anything to tell me if I'm selling any produce. So, I don't know if I am, or if it's kind of cancels it out, because obviously we've got all this stuff that we're paying for anyway. So I don't rightly know. But, yes. That is the field harvested. Now, I can't plant that until next month, I think, was the was the thing, wasn't it? Wheat and barley's not till September. There we go. Teddy, Teddy. Have a look. Yeah, so I can I can plant canola now. It just takes just takes that long. Shorter stuff, I like potatoes, but they need topping and everything else. It's this. It's so good. Is this really like a three-month grow period? It can't be, can it? So I want to kind of hold a field back for that just in case. I will plant wheat. You know what? I'll do wheat. I'll do wheat. I'll do canola. I'll do the same field for wheat, actually. Probably make the... Little field canola? Or the big... I'll do the little field canola. Do the little field canola. Do the big field... Sogum. Sogum? Whatever you want to call it. Right, to so sprayer. Do what I mean about all the dips and the bumps and hollers? I don't think I own that either, do I? Oh no. It turns out I do. Everything that I got here now I own. I don't lease anything. There's nothing in my lease department, which is kind of cool. We'll do little one, two, five size bales. Get a couple. Maybe. We, we might even struggle to get... No, we'll get one. We will get one, for sure. I don't know if we'll get many more, but we'll get one. So, a roller is potentially the next bet, because we've got a way to weed, we've got a way to fertilise. Every field is now just telling us, hey, you need the rollers. So, I think the roller might be the way to go. This field, unfortunately, isn't going to have its stones collected, whereas the other two did. Mainly because I am not going through that tedious endeavour again. I mean, the amount of straw that we get off of this field is offering ourselves to a really small pasture of animals. Like, really small. Anything much bigger on um, a creek without a paddle, basically. We've got to get like one and a half bales from this field. And it's the smallest size bale too. But I think we'll just stick to selling them. Hold it till winter maybe. I think winter would be a smart time. I did read somewhere that you can basically influence the market because the more often you sell a product 
the demand for said products goes down, which should then impact the other products going up. So if you are sneakily minded enough, you can influence your own market to benefit yourself, I guess. Now you keep selling stuff, hold stuff back. Like if I go sell the wheat and just keep selling the wheat and wheat and wheat, the canola that I've got in the stores will eventually go up and up and up in price. So if I keep on pumping through like wheat and stuff, that'll bring those prices down, but the canola price will go nicely up, which means when I do sell it, it could be a little bit sneaky. But that's too much like micromanagement and then next level stuff for me. Um, I'm quite happy just to do this. Look at the prices based on the weird little chart thing that I don't fully understand. And then hope that I can sell it when the price is reasonably nice. Which I'm sure last time we did straw of the first harvest. Time for straw was like January, December, January time, if I remember. I will double check with our nice three bales that we've got here. Then we will get... You know what, let's use this boy. We'll get this guy. Can I merge these two pallets together? Is that something that's a thing? Can I... Like... Let me look at the menus. No. Basically, there is no way, at least that I can find, where I can pour those two pallets of the same thing into one pallet, which is kind of frustrating in a way. Uh, I was going to go get the weight on the front, but I don't think I'll bother with that. I'll just go pick up the trailer. Bring the trailer over, we'll grab these bales. And then we'll find out what we're doing with straw. Here we go. This beautiful little thing. It can be used for many, many things. has many reasons and purposes. It shouldn't be so clanky to load up as I have been experiencing some really tricky times nice and flat it'll take bales it'll take pallets it'll even take vehicles i think I cannot confirm nor deny that one but it should be good for us our straps happy days also lowers down which makes it really easy to load on the flat so this is what i like about this one is it can sit down sit nice and low and then because we've got the tractor We stick the bales on the back. This is just to move them off the field, by the way. But look. It, it's like a trailer that can actually hold stuff without being so difficult to load. I mean, how easy was that for us to load? It was almost perfect-ish. Almost. This is going to be interesting because we're on the slight wonk, but hey ho. Don't overcompensate too much. Here we go. And now, in theory, I can nudge this anyway. Uh, let's do it forks down so we don't actually stick in. Hey, that'll do. That'll do. And then we can hopsy out and go up to the bales and we should have, there you go, a ratchet strap. That one's missed, but it's got one. That's so much easier than struggling with that little trailer trying to post it in. I'm not saying it's better, I'm just saying it's easier. Because ultimately I, I don't actually know if there is a benefit to having what am I trying to say I don't know if there's a benefit to having the tomatoes and the strawberries and stuff undercover there probably is I don't honestly know I don't know where you'd find that sort of stuff out either people just seem to know it which is kind of cool somebody's done a lot of testing somewhere so now ideally I need to put these straw somewhere which is kind of funky because we got rid of where we could have put them. And I 
can't really put anything down there for now because it's getting a little bit cluttered. I will just leave this out here. No, I won't. One thing at a time. Come on. Concentrate. Let's not get distracted. I will put the tomatoes on this. And then I will back it up into one of the Barney shed things. Hey! It's almost like we know what we're doing. It's amazing. Get that one. Get that one. Here we go. Boom. Gonna put it hopefully into this one where the pickup truck usually sits. Is the game gonna mind that this has got two sides missing? Is it gonna count it as being undercover in there? I don't really know. Do it do it. Right, so next thing I was gonna do, cultivator, but I want that other tractor. I want this tractor. He seemed to get on really well with the cultivator before. Well, if we spray before cultivating, is that is that a thing? Is that then gonna like chomp all the weeds down into the dirt? Well, that is interesting. So that that's removed one of the weeds, but it's also brought up a lot of stones. Interesting. But yes, a roller was the other thing, wasn't it? Of course. And of course, all the fields are saying that they need lime. I'll cultivate this and have a look, see what it's saying. Regardless, I'm not going to do them. Not going to lime them for a bit. That's just another job that's just so much more gear than I need and once you've got this done we'll look at a roller I think I don't know I think we'll lease a roller there's no point in buying one yet I'd like to buy one but we've only got 28 grand but again it's just more equipment that I don't have the space to store if I buy it so I'll get the sprayer spray the one that we've just cultivated We'll look again a roller and sort them all out that way instead. So then it's like everything's all up to the same stage. <laughs> it's just going to be a, a, a meme for me every time. Because of how big our fields are compared to how big this is. Bonkers. And that is done. Now we're after a roller, I guess. I'd have thought there'd have been a smaller one, but I guess maybe not. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that field rolling. Right. <laughs> I don't know either. One roller that has got us caught on the fence. Okay, he's a bit bigger than I was expecting him to come out to be. So what is the benefit to rolling the field then? Does it just squish the stones down and something or? That's cool. It just kind of flips over 180. Or maybe it doesn't push the stones down. I mean, we've got to collect the stones. Uh, I'm going to go all the way over, by the way. I'm going to go straight up because both of these fields need doing. So I'm just kind of going a straight line, roll them both. Squish the grass in between. Okay, so rolling isn't getting rid of the weeds like I thought it would have done. Generally thought it would kind of squish them back in. I don't even know if this is the right order. You're probably not supposed to roll until after you've planted or something, I guess. Let's have a look. Now, say it's telling me it needs rolling. Well, I suppose it does that bit needs rolling. This bit doesn't. That bit does. It doesn't. That's all right. We'll live with that. We're going to plant canola here, aren't we? Canola here. Wheat in the wheat field. 
and then wait for Sogum, or wherever it was. Go get me trailer. Pretty sure I can plant now. And then once I'm planted, job is fantastic. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. That's the one that we want. A bit of canola. Oka canola. <laughs> That's better. Kind of difficult to see the difference between where we've rolled and where we're planting, though. Should have gone at a slight different angle just to crisscross the lines up. Is this where this thing comes in handy? That's one of the one that we want down, I think. And that puts a groove there, right? Well, that's going to be helpful. Then you change ends. So then we want that sort of wheel to be on that, yeah? Yeah. Hey, that's really helpful. Look at me. I'm like farming like an actual farmer. That's mental. Gobs are good in. Now he needs rolling again. So are we supposed to roll after we've planted then? So maybe... That's the process there being explained to us. Roll after you've planted. No point in doing it before. Okay. One more thing learned, I guess. This needs weeding. Okay, so everything was kind of pointless to do. So you cultivate and then plant. And then when you've planted, do everything else. It's all part of learning. And I'll forget. I will forget, 100%. Are you lot going to have to remind me? There's the good news. It's been rolled. Oh, it can't complain that it needs rolling again. Because it's saying it needs weeding. But if we spray it, is that going to be a bad thing, or a good thing, or, or, or what? I'm not going to sell the straw, by the way. I don't know if I've said this already, but I looked at the straw price and it is the lowest of the lowest right now, which makes sense with its being sort of spring-summer months. It wouldn't be very necessary to provide food and bedding when they could be out in the grass, so... It's happy that it's been done, though. Hopefully that is one field sorted. Got to wait till next month. And then I've also got to look at these prices for this stuff, actually. I haven't even contemplated looking at that yet. Canola's not too bad. Goes to 2-2. Two, two. So we could sell at Goldcrest Valley. Miss out at 300 quid. I'm going to take a Goldcrest Valley just because it's the train down there. That looks like it could be fun. Oh yeah, that's what we've got. I forgot the canola was such a small amount. I don't know why I was expecting more. I really forgot. Oh yeah, Goldcrest Valley. Crane station. It's going to be short of 300 quid a ton, which is quite a bit. But we're here for the experience. So we'll see what we've got. So, how does one sell a train, then? Let's sell a train. How does one, how do I sell a train? How do I sell at this place? Rent a train for... I think I spammed the button. And then he's going to stop. No? I am so confused. I'm not going to lie. Maybe we go in here? But 
that's going in there to store. Okay. And then we rent a train. Train is arriving soon. Okay, so just got to wait for the train, I guess. Okay, uh, I think I slightly understand it. So if I look at the map, right? So the gold crest is the, that is the train station. In order to get the stuff in the train station, I have to go through a grain pool. Well, I've got that grain pool or this grain pool, whatever it is, this one. So I could have just gone either or. I went to the furthest. Oh, they're both equidistant, actually. Okay, well, he's on his way. So fingers crossed what should happen is train pulls in here and gets loaded up with canola hopefully that's what's happening we'll have to just wait and see and see what happens so he pulls into there please load up yes how do i Okay, so then I back this up. I can load the canola. It's loaded. Wow. And and then and then what? I drive this away. Yes, I want to sell my goods in the localnessness. Okay, so. As somehow I made nearly eight grand. I'm not entirely sure how. It wouldn't let me get in the train when the train was again the rails. I had to cab into it, which is an interesting thing to discover. But I have made some sales. That was a headache, but it was an experience nonetheless. <laughs> right, I'll see you guys again next time. You take it easy and bye for now.